Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House up in Maine, taking a look at a number of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2017 auction. In this particular auction, they have a number of American 1907 Test Trials pistols, and I have one of those in front of me today. This is a Noble, specifically a double action 45 caliber Noble automatic pistol. J.W. Noble uh, was a fellow who lived in Tacoma, Washington. He patented this design in 1903, and when he found out about the U.S. pistol trials, he wrote to the government, to the Ordnance Department, asked if he could submit a pistol. They said yes, so he promptly sent them a check for $2.86 in order to uh, purchase 100 rounds of the ammunition that would be used in the trials. They sent him that. He designed his pistol and tuned it specifically to that ammunition and then sent off in the express mail two, actually, two pistols to the Ordnance Department for trials. Now, Noble was not able to be present at the trials. Um, there, I haven't found any explanation of why. Either he was embarrassed by the pistol or he just had prior commitments. Uh, whatever the case, uh, the two guns he sent, one was a double action trigger and one was a single action only trigger. This is the double action gun. So this is, in fact, one of the actual test trials gun, uh, test trial guns, and we know that because there are only ever two nobles in 45 caliber made, and this is one of them. Now, it has a total of 59 parts because Noble wasn't there at the trial. Uh, his gun was basically operated, represent, he was represented by a Springfield Armory employee who did the disassembly and, and such, and it took about three minutes and change to completely detail strip the gun, which is not that bad. Uh, it took about five minutes to put it back together, but then they got to the shooting. In fact, they never did actually shoot this gun because they deemed it not worth shooting. I quote from the trials report here, A careful examination and several efforts to fire these weapons showed that they were so crudely manufactured as to render any test without value, smooth working being impossible. It was therefore decided that these arms would be given no further consideration by the board. Sorry, J.W. Noble. But pistol ain't going to cut it. I'm not going to let that stop me from taking a closer look at this pistol though, although I won't be shooting it. I have here a standard model of 1911, so we have a bit of a size comparison. The 45 caliber Noble is pretty huge. It's a, definitely a bigger pistol than the 1911. Uh, Noble did make a couple other guns in 30 Luger, and those are substantially smaller guns, much smaller frames, much handier guns. Uh, in fact, I have a separate video on one of those, which you should take a look at if you're interested. But on to the 45 Noble. That said, it actually handles pretty nicely. It's got a deep beaver tail in here, and Noble's original letter to the Ordnance Department specifically says that you should take a very high grip and get your hand right up into this recess. And it has a nice kind of Luger-like grip angle to it. Uh, the sights are small. I can show you the sights here. So yeah, small sights, which is not all that atypical for the time, but wouldn't be the easiest thing to shoot. And then mechanically, the Noble is a short recoil toggle locked pistol. So if I push back on the top of the slide here, that breaks our knee joint open. So normally what happens is these two lugs lock into these two shoulders, and that prevents the breech block from opening when you fire. Then recoil slides this whole assembly backwards, and the toggle connections in here force these lugs up and unlock them. Then we can cycle it back like this. There is no hold open on this pistol. Of course, I have the magazine out right now anyway. But you can see here that it doesn't quite work the same way as a Luger, although the principle is the same. The idea is once it moves back this far, the slide and barrel stop, and then residual energy pulls this back against a mainspring. Tap that and it'll go nicely back into battery. We then have a hammer here. This firing pin goes straight through. It is spring-loaded. You can see it moving just a little bit there. And that gets hit by the hammer. And it is both double action and single action. The other model submitted was single action only. For, as for the magazine, interestingly, the trials report does not even record the capacity of the magazine. So in a Forgotten Weapons 
world exclusive, I have loaded it to capacity here, and I can tell you that it holds eight rounds, and not easily. You actually kind of have to reach in here and hold the follower down, and then put the rounds in. This looks like it ought to hold a lot more. It's a very long magazine, but because of the steep angle that it's holding these cartridges at, uh, it only holds eight. So in order to load it, you can't really, with the first couple, you can push down here and then slide the round in. But what you have to do beyond that is grab the follower here, pull it down, and then drop each cartridge into position like that. Now I mentioned I have previously looked at a 30 caliber Noble. This one has a distinct advantage in the magazine department in that it has these two grasping tabs on the magazine which make it easy to pull the magazine out. Interestingly, like the 30 caliber Noble, this has this open slot on the front of the magazine well, or on the front of the grip. I really have no idea what that's for. There is nothing corresponding to it here except for a spot that has a different finish pattern, a different wear pattern because it's constantly exposed and under the shooter's hand. The magazine is actually quite tight to install. It goes about that far and then kind of hangs up and we have to push it in there. This is not a drop-free magazine by any stretch of the imagination. However, the magazine catch is located here on the back and so it's actually pretty easy to grab the tabs like this, pull the catch, and then you've got these to grab onto to pull the magazine out. The 30 caliber gun did not have these and the magazine sat flush in the bottom of the grip and made it much more difficult to get the magazine out. There were only two of these Nobles ever made, and there are literally no markings on this one whatsoever. No name, no patent address, no date, nothing. Well, I don't know about you, but personally, I find the losing entrance in some of these sorts of trials more interesting than the winning ones. The winning ones go on to be common, and we know all about them. The losing ones are often the ones with really quirky, interesting ideas that are only made in very small numbers and usually lost to history. So it's really cool to be able to take a look at this, one of only two extant Noble 45 caliber pistols. Now, if you'd like to add it to your own uh, 45 caliber pistol collection, uh, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to the James Julia auction catalog page for this pistol. You can take a look at their pictures and their description and place a bid right there through the website if you're interested. Or of course, come here to Maine and participate live in the auction. Thanks for watching.